You're listening to About My Father's Business, presented by Iron Wifey. Without further ado, here's your host, the Iron Wifey herself, Michaela. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of About My Father's Business, the podcast where we highlight men and women who are carrying out the father's business in their lives. Now, today's guest is near and dear to my heart and very close to home. So close, in fact, she's family. But not only is she family, she is the first lady at the Ark of Christian Church in St. Louis, Missouri. She is the minister of music there at her church. She is a gospel recording artist and has about seven to eight albums out that you can check out today. And excitingly, she is my future and now co-host of a new podcast that we just launched, which we're going to talk about a little bit in this episode. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I can't wait for you to hear about her amazing testimony on how she was discovered musically from singing at a funeral. Yes, a funeral. And she will talk about that. Trust me. Um, to literally starting her own business, becoming a woman of God, becoming a wife and a mother, and just transitioning into what the Lord had for her. Now, without further ado, I can't wait for you all to meet and learn more about today's guest. Uh, we will get into some amazing conversation, and we're going to get a little bit into her life behind the music. Ha! Huh. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Without further ado, I introduce to you our guest for today, Mrs. Kathy Ori. Welcome to the show, Kathy. Hi, Michaela. Thank you. I'm so honored to be on the show about my father's business. And that's yes. Now, I am super excited because we have some exciting news to roll out to the people today. However, I do always start the show with the same question. Yes. Kathy, what does it mean to you to be about your father's business? It means that I'm doing what he has called me to do, that he does not have to look for someone else to do what I am supposed to be doing. And I feel that my, um, my gift to earth and my gift to mankind, my gift to the next generation is through the vehicle of music. And mm -hmm. so I know we're going to get into that, but a major part of what I'm here to do and to be about my father's business is to utilize my gift. Amen. Now, we're just going to go ahead and dive right into your gift of music. We have some exciting news for you listeners. We are actually starting a new podcast. Actually, we just started a yes, new podcast. Did. Yes, we did. Excited about it. Life Behind the Music is our yes. Guest. Yes. So Kathy and I are your co-host and we will be hosting a weekly show every Monday, Life Behind the Music, where we cultivate conversations around music and God's truth. Now, Kathy, I really want to get into, you know, the gifts that you were speaking on um, creating music. And I'm curious, when did you first discover your gifting for music? The word discover is key for me. Okay. Um, I would say even before I entered my teens, I discovered my love for music and I followed that just out of pure love, just wanted to be around it. Um, and so it was early. It was early. I know a lot of, you know, I have sons and it's almost like I want them to know what you want to do in life, you know. <laughs> Don't play on that game. Think about what you want to do in life. But it doesn't comfort to people like that, you know, always. But uh, fortunately, I knew early on. I, um, when I was around three years of age. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I know it. I could hear bass lines and I could hear things on, um, you know, that I could pick out on the piano, believe it or not. And then at age nine, I uh, was featured on a recording that was done statewide uh, with this choir, the Chain Lake District Choir. Okay. And 
at age nine, I did my first little recording, uh, well, with the choir. And then I went on to uh, do a local uh, little single um, that I did, uh, Walking in the Dark, Searching for True Love. And that was the <laughs> title of it, you know, 14, what do I know about true love? Exactly. You know, I loved my music. I know mm -hmm. that, you know. And so then um, I did... Uh, a tour with a pretty popular band at that time, the SOS band. They they heard me sing, and uh, and so they came to Battle Creek, my hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, you know very well, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so um, they uh, they coerced somehow my mom to allow me to go on. Uh, uh, it, it was just a little small tour with them. Um, and my brother was with me, of course. Uh, but I do have to backtrack. When I was about eight years of age, mm -hmm. uh, my cousin, our cousin, Earl, mm -hmm. um, he had me on the Greyhound bus. We had our little church's chicken bag. And here I am, eight years old. I could barely look out the window of the, the bus. And we were headed to the studio. So that was my introduction to the studio. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's just so dear to my heart. And to this day, he's he's a soundboard for me. You know, I uh, he's on my board uh, for a nonprofit organization that I have um, gifted, which is a music and mentoring program where we reach to the next generation through the vehicle of music. And so um, he's still around, but that was my introduction. And so I went on from, from there to wow. uh, here I am today. So I don't want to take all of your questions because I'm just a rolling, <laughs> just a rolling. I'm so happy. See, yeah. that is crazy. You've literally been cultivating these gifts since the age wow. of 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes not even realizing it, you know, mm -hmm. and when you when you have a love for something, it is innate, you know, you just you, you gravitate to it, you, you just lean towards that, that love. Yeah, so I have now, been cultivating. With your love for music, I know, um, I've done a little bit of digging. And so I know that you know, one of the first couple of albums or the first album you put out wasn't necessarily a gospel album, but yeah. you were huge. Like you blew up. How did that happen? How did you go from this eight, nine, 10, 14 year old that's just touring with small groups and, you know, yeah. out of Battle Creek to yeah. becoming this, this hit, not pop sensation, because pop wasn't really big back then, but literally becoming this hit. And then how did you kind of transition into gospel music? Well, I would say um, if I could take the latter question, mm -hmm. say I was reared around church. I was reared in the church. I grew up in the church. And so, um, you know, it's, 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 it comes back to a relationship, but then the first question, part of the question was, um, how did this all happen? Yes. Um, I, I learned, I was in high school and I was singing at a funeral. And this is when I learned that you never know who's in your audience. So you have to give, you have to, um, you know, just shine mm -hmm. and bloom. And so um, after that service, this big time promoter with uh, Epic slash Polygram Records uh, was a family member to the deceased. And um, he approached my mom and I, and he said, I want to record her. And uh, he had groups on his roster like um, SOS Band, um, Alexander O'Neill. This is before your time, but <laughs> someone listening may be uh, reminded of some of this uh, music that uh, we grew up on. But it was a lot of Sherelle and 
a lot of uh, artists that was on this label. And so um, to sure, the long story short, uh, I ended up, he was out of Atlanta. And mm -hmm. so I ended up recording, starting uh, that whole recording um, fetish that, oh my God, it was like big time. And so one thing led to another. I ended up signing with CBS Records, Taboo CBS Records. And uh, that put me on the mainstream. And one day I was washing my car and I heard my music on the radio. Oh I was my like, oh, MG, I could not believe it. I was like, really? And it was the the number one station in Atlanta because I, oh I, yeah, I ended up moving to Atlanta. Okay. And, um, and so uh, his, he took me in, he and his family and, and um, my mom, she was like, Kathy, you have a full ride scholarship. You know, it was an academic scholarship. And, um, and I was supposed to, uh, supposed to work at this bank, you know, as an intern, you know, mm -hmm. like Bank of America. And so she just knew that I was like on that track, boy, when that door opened for me to go to Atlanta and start this recording and things were just happening. And then, mm -hmm. um, so I said, mom, I got to go. I have to go. I have to follow, you know, I have to follow my heart. And so lo and behold, I get to Atlanta and you're thinking everything was just going to take off and boom, boom, boom. And it was all of a sudden, Michaela, I came to a halt. It was just like, nothing was happening in the music industry. And so it was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting a, a job at Red Lobster. <laughs> I was a waitress at Red Lobster, which did not last long at all. I was not called to that. And God bless those who wait on people, have to deal with them. They put me out there on a Saturday for my first day. I felt like I was a whirlwind. I was in this like haze, like, oh my God, I didn't know what to do. And there was so many people coming left and right. Yeah. Oh no, this is not for me. So anyway, um, yeah, so I, I, and then, because it was dry with the music industry, you know, it took off like it was getting ready, I was getting ready to land this deal, and, and everything just squashed, and, and so, like I said, I did the Red Lobster, and then, do you believe, would you believe, I got another scholarship at Morris Brown College, a basketball scholarship to wow. play and and so I said okay well I'm gonna jump into this you know I play ball all through school I mean grew up around all brothers and so I, I was into the sports thing mm -hmm. and uh, man do you know that's when I really really the contract was signed so I was only in that state for maybe about three months trying to work Red Lobster and do this school thing so I said because I got to do something I was going to go back to school and that's when it really happened. So I was able to sign the contract and I went out to California. And even while I was out there, because I did not forget your question, you said, no, you're good. I'm back to gospel. And even when I was in California, you know, I was doing my thing and, and it, you know, all, that, all of that was secular. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the promoter from the time he started recording me, all of that was secular. Okay. But um, I was in the studio in California and it was like, everything stopped. Cause I was singing this song that was, it was a straight invitation to the bedroom. And it was like, what are you doing singing this? And, 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 and the engineers were wondering what's going on with her. Cause it was just, but I heard a voice. Mm. I heard a voice and do you say it was audible or was in my gut? It was in my spirit. Yeah. But the voice said, what are you doing? I created you to sing my praises. And that was the, that was the, the war. Yeah. It was a war. And because, you know, you think you're just going to church, you think you're just doing, you know, what your mom or your dad say, you're going to church today, but some, some spiritual stuff is getting inside of you. It's getting in there. And uh, 
the relationship that I was sharing with you, you know, when I said it comes to relationship. And so in some of my valleys through the recording, I went forth and released the secular music and, and it was, it was booming. I had the, the major company behind me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it takes that all of the manpower and, and to get your music out there. So I went on and out of the permissive will of God, I was able to do two uh, albums with CBS Records. Uh, the first uh, title was Catwalk. And that was <laughs> the one that really went, you know, mm -hmm. it was climbing up the board, uh, the billboard charts video, you know, and, and then I released A Woman's Touch. And you're talking about a touch. God was touching me, you mm -hmm. know. He was wooing me back to him. And, uh, and so I went through some valleys even after recording. And, but God was there to say to me, I want you to come closer to me. I want you to come closer to me. And those words that he spoke to me, come closer to me, had to do everything to do with me serving him, me living for him, me, my message in my music, yeah. the message in my music. I mean, and that was like the core, you know? And so the relationship was established. It was no longer just going to church, you know, or, you know, straddling, you know, one day I'm in the church singing and then the other day I was at, you know, I had a gig, you know, mm -hmm. doing songs that were just, totally in another direction yeah. <laughs> uh, you know praises to God um, but the relationship was established I said yes to him when he said that you know come closer to me and um, my dear mom who's uh, she's looking over the portals of glory now she she really was like God used her to really seal that and she said Kathy give God a year and what I heard in my spirit was give God a try and so here I am today. I've done that and I'm, I'm on this road with him to stay. Yeah. Amen. I love that. I love your testimony. I love your story. And I love what the Lord is doing through you. Now, yeah. I do have a question for you. What does it look like for a musician, an artist, a creator, a singer? What does it look like in the creation process? of putting together an environment or an atmosphere that gives God the glory. Like you are a music minister, are mm -hmm. at the Ark of Safety Christian Church. You yeah. produce your own music. You yeah. write your own music. You release your own music. But most importantly, as mm -hmm. a music minister at your church, you create this environment where people enter into worship. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, what does that process look like for you and putting that together so that people can enter into this space where they can just free, excuse me, freely give God mm -hmm. all the glory. Well, it's personal time. I say it starts there. It's my time when I'm alone, you know, mm -hmm. it's not when I have a microphone in my hand and really when the microphone is in my hand or I'm at the keyboard, that's an overflow of my time with God, just he and I, you know, so that's a every day, minute by minute, uh, hour by hour. It's not just a posture. Uh, it's, it's a walking, you know, checking in. I'm, I'm, I always want to, um, know that God has a stamp of approval of, of what I'm doing or how to do. He speaks to me about songs to minister. It's not like he comes down and write it down. So I don't want to sound so spooky spiritual that I'm no earthly good. I don't do anything, you know, to, to, uh, in the natural to do the part as I prepare for worship in the songs that uh, uh, we have a praise team. I work with the band. Um, we have a choir um, and I'm just working in all facets of the ministry. And so um, it, it, it really comes down to that relationship with the Lord. So when you know, his, when you hear his voice, you know that he's saying 
this is the song I want. And, and I tell you, it's like just about every week, he gives me a wink to say, you're on target, you're on track. This is what I wanted, you know, in, in my service, because ultimately, you know, everybody's part plays a big part. Yeah. That at the end, we want to, you know, we want a touchdown, you know, and that touchdown is someone's life is changed. Uh, someone comes to the Lord and um, everybody's part uh, matters. So um, that's kind of how I approach um, being the minister of music. Um, it's an overflow of my, my time and my relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Now, since building the Ark of Safety Christian Church with your husband, yes, Ray, <laughs> um, how has it been, first off, working together with your husband in ministry? Mm -hmm. And what have you learned from that so far? Well, um, we started, uh, it was almost like it was turned because when we met, and we married, I was kind of out front and he would do my sound and, you know, we were traveling, I was ministering in music and he would do the, the CD table and, you know, he was the background guy. Mm -hmm. And so God was preparing and it wasn't like we sat down and said, okay, now it's your turn because he was kicking and screaming. He did not want the responsibility of a pastor. And so, but God had his way, which we knew that he would. And so the tables have turned. And so I'm more, though I lead in worship and it's uh, like a pre preparation for him to come and minister the, the word of God. But I, I feel like I'm more kind of, um, he's out front, you know, more so now. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, it works well. It works. Um, and, and really our children, that's been my prayer, that they would be a part of uh, doing God's, um, about God's business. I like that, you mm -hmm. know, being about that business along with us. Uh, but we pray over that because you don't want your children to resent. Yeah you know, constantly church, 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 and do this. And it's all about the membership and, and pushing your family aside. We don't do that. You know, we, we make sure that family, that's our first ministry, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I have learned that I'm not in control <laughs> that's what I've learned, that God is in control and I want him to be in control. Cause sometimes it's like, you just, you know, I feel like I want to take a back seat because really, and I don't know that you know this about Auntie Michaela, but I am a shy person. You what? May, Get out of here. You may not believe it, but I am such a shy person. And there are times when I just want to be just to myself and back in the cut and just, you know, no responsibility, you know. But I said yes to the Lord and I would not reverse that um, because, again, he is in charge. He knows what's best for uh, mm -hmm. my husband and I and our family. And I dare not get in the way thinking I want my way. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I need. That's why I need him because he's already ahead. He's already there. He's already in the end. So I'm going to walk with him. So it's, it's good. Yeah. Amen. And then we have these, um, you know, we have our children, but then we have mm -hmm. these spiritual children, you know? So even like when I go into rehearsal, it's not just, okay, learn this, learn this song, learn this music and go home everybody has a situation, you know? <laughs> and so as forerunners in the forefront, you could be celebrating, oh, such a sweet time of someone having a baby and they're excited and you're excited with them. But then in the same hour, you could get a call, you know, that someone just lost their baby or lost a family member, you know? Yeah. I mean, 
every day is just, you know, but God prepares us and um, we know that we are to look to him, you know, to heal those, those wounds of our congregation that they go through and that we all go through. We're a very close knit con congregation, but um, Hey, he's, he's entrusted us. So it's, uh, it's pretty, um, it's, it's neat. It's, it's <laughs> neat. It is, you know, you, I, you dare not do this, trying to do this in your own strength. You know, it's, it's, it's God. It's God. Yeah, definitely. Amen. Well, we appreciate you for building up your congregation and building up your body and being a, a symbol and a beacon of hope for those who may not have the most positive interactions with churches. Yeah, I know. And I think that is our uh, most uh, important endeavor is to be what we want, we preach and sing about, and then... Um, you know, not not blame, be uh, uh, um, leaders that their con the congregation can't even be proud of, you know, because it is so much out here that is not true, you know, from leadership to uh, false um, teachings to... So to whom much is given, much is required of us. So, you know, we realize the importance of God entrusting us to lead a people. Um, and it is, it is a lot out here. And, and it's just even the time we're living in, you know, you want to uh, be there for um, the congregation. And we're not in service, you know. We, well, we, I take that back. We have daily word every day. Um, my husband and I, uh, 7 p.m. Central Time, we're on the Ark of Safety um, YouTube as well as our, you know, just log on Ark of Safety. So um, he said a song and a sermon. So I'll bring a song or two and um, boy, 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 he's a teaching machine. So God uses him and he comes right back behind me and we tag team and we do that six days a week. And so uh, the congregation and uh, non-members alike are able to tune in and just get some spiritual nourishment during this time that we're going through because we don't know exactly when we're going to go back into the building. So mm -hmm. we're on Monday through Friday. We have Saturday off, but Sunday, of course, um, at 9 a.m. So um we're the under shepherds to, you know, feed the flock. And we've taken wow. that on. Yeah, we've taken it on. Yeah. Amen. Well, you guys make sure if you are looking for an online church or a church home to start in, you're based out of St. Louis, or maybe you're not, definitely make sure you tune in Monday through Friday. I'll have the links below for you guys. So you don't have to look anywhere. But, you know, if you're looking for that word, it's yeah. there, a song and a sermon. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Now, Kathy, I want to shift gears and okay. get into life behind the music. You yeah. and I decided to start a podcast, a show to, again, cultivate conversations around music and God's truth. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to get into, like, how this got started. <laughs> you know, Kayla, it's, it's just amazing how God, um, you know, he's doing things and it's almost like we're oblivious to what he's doing. And then the connection is made. Uh, of course, we're family. Yeah. Uh, but I do, I truly, truly believe and know in my spirit, in my knower, that this was a God connection. Oh, and I definitely agree. I definitely agree. It's crazy because, and I'll give you guys like a little bit of the backstory, but um, Kathy is my crazy okay Kathy is my I'm my aunt but my cousin so she's not my aunt she's my cousin mm -hmm. <laughs> um our my grandmother mm -hmm. and her mother are sisters yeah yeah you're right yeah so I was like wait a minute like you know yeah. I call you aunt Kathy but you're not my aunt you're my cousin <laughs> and I think it's the age and it's the yeah. uh, 
you know, and God using even our age with this show, we're building, you know, bridging that, that gap, you know, but it's more of a relationship of a, a niece and yeah. auntie. Yeah. Because your dad and I are first cousins, yes. but we grew up as brother and sister. I mean, he's just as much as my brother, really. I mean, mm -hmm. this is not no t just talk. Our, our families were that close. So that's why you call me auntie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when you say close, I mean close, y'all. Like growing up, yeah. if you live in Battle Creek or you're familiar with Battle Creek, you know that yeah. so-and-so exactly. lives here and the house in front of that is auntie so-and-so and the house behind <laughs> that is cousin so-and-so. So <laughs> Hello. <laughs> definitely close. <laughs> right. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yes. So it's but, thing. God did this. He, he did. did. He really did. Because I remember my dad reached out and he was like, Kayla, you and Aunt Kathy need to do something. I don't know what it is, but y'all need to do something. She wants to get her music out there and I think you can help her. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm not an a and I, no. I don't know anything about music promotion. I don't know anything about like yeah. getting music <laughs> out there, but I mean... I'll what? call her and yeah. we'll see. Right. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Right. Yeah. Literally, I remember our call. Like, you didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. We were just sitting there like, so this is what I want to do. And I'm like, okay, this is what I can do to help you. Right. And somehow it turned into a podcast. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the flow of the conversation, it was like, the Holy Spirit just took over the wheel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know what to ask you and you didn't know exactly, well, how will this work? You know? Mm -hmm. And then it was like, boom, it just started making sense. And then, you know, God gave us the name and we were just, mm -hmm. it was like, we were, we were in the back seat just riding along and mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit was saying, this is how we're going to do this, you know? And I think, um, we have like spirits, you know, yeah, and it, you know, he, he is just a masterful orchestrator. Mm -hmm. He orchestrated this, but he uses mere man. So your dad said a word, you heard that word, you listen and you moved on that word. And so there are some things in the natural that we did, but ultimately it was like, he put just a, he, he just put a blanket over it. And here we are. Yes. So we are <clears throat> so excited. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, actually, August 10th, we released our first episode of Life Ooh. Behind the Music. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> Life Behind the Music. Tell somebody about it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. make sure you guys tune in every Monday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a conversation about the Word of God, life, yeah. Yeah. and music. And a really big thing that we love is that we are highlighting um, a song every week. We're highlighting one of your songs each week. And the topics of our conversation are based around the title of that song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's been, it's been awesome. It really has been. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's getting to this point and I'm just looking forward to a bright future and to be a beacon of light to encourage, yes. you know, because everybody you're going through, you're in it or you're on your way. And so we got linked our hearts up. And mm -hmm. I think that's the, that is the ultimate goal for us is to encourage God's people, you know, the listener and to give God glory through that. And so um, he can trust us to do that. Yes. Yeah. And honestly, it has been such a blessing. It has been such a blessing to just, you know, when you connect with someone and you just, you're just like, oh my gosh, you love yeah. Jesus too? Oh my yeah. gosh, let's talk about him. <laughs> it has just been such a blessing to create conversations around yeah. God's truth. It truly has been such a blessing to just talk about 
the glory of the Lord in all that he's doing in your life, in my life, in life in general, especially in a time where, you know, there's so much fear. It is. It is. And uh, I was listening to uh, former um, First Lady Michelle Obama, and she was sharing how depression was trying to set in, you Mm -hmm. know, looking and listening to the news and and seeing all of she said fear and depression was and you know I was so thankful that she was you know transparent and even vulnerable to share that because sometimes you think oh you know certain people certain things can't and um and I know exactly uh that that feeling but I know that with shows like Life Behind the Music and About My Father's Business, this is a way, even though it's news, it's Mm -hmm. the good news, you know, to keep us encouraged in these times of uncertainty, in these times of fear, and when fear tries to grip you at, I mean, your core, you know, where God, oh, we have to be reminded that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And so these are things that we'll be sharing. Um, and I know that you've been sharing um, um, and we'll be sharing on Life Behind the Music. We just want to encourage. We do. Yes. We wanna, yeah, in these times. And we want to encourage you to step into your giftings you know yeah. Kathy's gifting was music and you've heard her testimony when she stepped into that when she accepted God's call on her life to minister it just took over and yeah. so for her to step into her giftings and share her music with you is a blessing and I believe that my gift is just conversation I love stories I love talking to people I love the interviewing in in any aspect yeah. and so like just connection we want you we want to encourage you to step into whatever it is that God has called you to do whatever your gifting is um and truly just walk in that like pick up your mat and walk just go and be obedient because like we didn't know life behind the music was going to start you know we just took that that little inkling that word and we just rolled with it and like yeah we were in the back seat and the Holy Spirit was in the driver's seat yeah yeah it was awesome yeah so We'll um, look forward to some awesome episodes. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, now, Kathy, I'm, too. What was I that? Some guests on there, too. Oh, yeah. We got some exciting things lined up for you guys. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> some super exciting things, even some like, you know, movie things. But we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we just go and drop that seed there and let y'all <laughs> contemplate on that. <laughs> <laughs> big stuff amen god is good all the time all yeah. the time yeah now kathy i do want to wrap up just a little bit um but i do end every interview with the same question um before we get there though where can people find you you can go to my website kathyori.com and get all of your uh, my updates and all of that right there All right, you guys, kathyori.com. I'll have the links below in the description. And also for Life Behind the Music, you can check out the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, uh, YouTube. It's going to be video as well. And you can check out everything and get all the information you need at lifebehindthemusic.com. Now, for the last question of the show, I end the the show with every, I I end every show with the same question. But Kathy. Yes. Iron wifey is derived from Proverbs 27, 17, which states that as iron sharpens iron, one friend sharpens another. So our motto is as iron sharpens iron, one woman sharpens another. How are you sharpening the woman in your life? Okay, well, I believe in mentoring and having a mentee, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I always make sure that I have someone that I'm mentoring. And then... My gift is an encourager. I'm a cheerleader. You could have all the stuff going wrong. I believe that we have to encourage more. Don't see the negative. 
I, I look for the good, even in a bad situation. And so um, that's my iron sharpened iron. I'm going to mentor and I'm going to encourage. I love it. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for encouraging us in this episode. Thank you so much for encouraging me and just my walk with Christ and for being my cousin, auntie, sister, friend. <laughs> um, and thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you. We cannot wait to see what Life Behind the Music has in store between the two of us. And um, I'm just, I'm honored to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, I am just equally as honored and, and thankful that we're co-hosts and it's going to be so much fun. So thank you for having me on About My Father's Business. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.